Welcome to the video from the digitallifestyle.com. In this video we're going to have a look at Windows 10 uh, running on a small tablet. Um, Windows 10 will be released uh, July 29th and here we are using the Windows Insider program so we have a preview of that release and this is a clean install. Um, it was upgraded from Windows 8.1 and then I did a PC refresh so it's nice and clean plus I've added some apps in there as well. So what's changed in Windows 10 from Windows 8.1 for small tablet users. So there's quite a lot really. I know not everybody likes all these new features but having spent the last few months on it I actually uh, have got to really like Windows 10 and um, so I thought I'd go through some of the changes. So I mean, the first thing you'll see visually is that you've got the tiles here and um, in the previous version they went left to right and now they go up and down. Also you may see there's quite a bit of board around there, that's one of the things that people don't like. I actually think it reminds me of Windows Phone now where they scroll up and down and that makes sense on a on a small tablet like this. Um, in landscape mode and, uh, and here's another device, in landscape mode they line up like that but they still scroll up and down. So let's have a look. So what's like I said, we start. We've now got the uh, the tiles go up and down like that, and we've got these new items on here. Plus, even in uh, in full screen mode, which we're in now, we've got these icons here. I should say as well, we don't have to have it in tablet mode. We can take it out of tablet mode, and we get the small start menu like on a on a PC. And if you've got continuum, well, this this comes with continuum, which means that if you've got a device that's got a keyboard and mouse attached like a Surface Pro 3 and then when you detach that it will then ask you if you want to change to tablet mode as this doesn't we'll stick to tablet mode for now because uh, that's what we're going to focus on. So like I said we've got these things here we've got these changes here so what are these well the so-called hamburger menu here uh, shows you your username and you can sign out from here most used applications and recently added applications so I recently installed that these are ones that I've most used. This is a, only a bit, only a day or so old build, so it's uh, not showing that much yet. Down here we've got File Explorer with the option of pop-outs, and you can change that as well, um, which is quite nice. We've got Settings, Power, and All Apps. We'll have a look at those in a sec. But the All Apps list is a list of all programs installed on this uh, PC. And this tablet we've recently added. The all apps list is actually the same as just going through on there. So now you've got a quick, easy way of getting to your all apps list. You may remember on Windows 8.1, you had to scroll up from the bottom, which I actually did like, and I don't know why that's not there anymore, but still, that is relatively easy to, to get to that. The other thing we've got on here is the power button, and uh, that gives you the reach, sleep, shut down, restart, and restart with an update if there's pending updates. So what else has changed? Well, let's have a look. So as I mentioned before, we're in tablet mode now and the difference between Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 is in Windows 8.1 every app was full screen. So if you loaded up the browser, this is the Microsoft Edge browser, which is the new browser, which is a, a reason to upgrade in itself because I really like this browser. It's nice and fast and um, lightweight as well. So it's, it's a good browser to replace it for Internet Explorer. But you may remember in 8.1, if you used Internet Explorer, it, the modern version it was full screen you didn't get any of the bars you didn't get any of this at all every app was full screen so if you then switch to another app let's say um, the new photos app then that's full screen as well so in this respect it's working very much like uh, Windows 8.1 the difference being now you can switch between tasks like that or you can swipe in let me do that and swipe in there and switch applications. But what you do, you get this bar is, is there all the time. I think there's an option to turn this on and off if you want, but I actually like this on because this tablet doesn't have a Windows key at the bottom, has it up here and up here on the top. And I don't like that up there. So this is much better down here to have that. So that's a good thing. If you're on the desktop, so to get out of tablet mode, you'll see that the apps are still there but they're windowed so these are the modern apps in a window I'm just going to flip back to tablet mode now now remember back to Windows 8.1 if you were in um, 
in the, in the start screen like this, you had a desktop tile. There is no desktop tile on this. So if you wanted to load the desktop version of an app, say Office um, or um, File Explorer or um, a program you installed yourself, then not from the store, then you had to go to the desktop and then you could load the program and task switching just switch between those. This is different, I can show you by using say File Explorer. Um, that's an app in its own right. Now what about, let's uh, use Windows Media Player, which isn't a modern app, but it is installed on this device. So I load Windows Media Player, I'll just go with the recommended settings there. So that's a desktop app running on this device. And like I said, in 8.1 you would have to go to the desktop and then you'd seen that and if you task switched, you know, the swipe in and out, you would get the, between the desktop and the other modern apps. Now, the desktop apps are separate and they basically switch to switch you can switch to them using the the task switcher so in other words desktop apps and modern apps share the same way of working and you don't have that two os approach that you had in that in the windows a1 you, you don't have to remember which is a desktop and which is a modern app they all work together if you're not in tablet mode they can be windowed if you're in tablet mode they're full screened even if you go to say something like the old-fashioned control panel which is still there for some things like network and sharing center it just fires it up full screen and then it becomes a full screen app in its own right as well so that way of working is less confusing for people and makes things a lot easier to understand so I actually do like that uh, a lot better and I, like I said I like this taskbar at the bottom. So there are some other things you'll notice on this taskbar which we're going to have a look at in a sec. So what I'll do, I'll go to the, let's just load up the settings. Um, so notice, notice it's now in Windows 10, all the settings are modern, or well, most of the ones anyway, are there. So if you wanted to check your Wi-Fi settings, uh, that's there. And if I want to go back, I can use the universal back button to go back and change on there. So no longer do you get the mixture of some modern full screen windows settings as you do in 8.1 and then some of the traditional control panel. Now nearly everything is in here. There are a couple of things in control panel but uh, not that many now and uh, as you see they go full screen anyway so it is easier to use. So that back app button is great for that and it works very much like on Windows Phone and it'll it keeps a stack of things and you go back between them. And you saw the settings there. Now of course this leads to my other favourite feature which is um, Action Centre. So Action Centre is a combination of some sh shortcuts and notification areas. Now you may remember in 81 you get say a Twitter notification or an email, it pops up at the top there's a little toast notification and it disappears. If you missed it, then you've missed it. You'll never find out what that was. You have to go into the individual apps to have a look at them. Here, they stay on here and uh, they stay on there. So there was an update for us, some tweeting updates, and they stay on there until I clear them off, either individually or as a group. And that is uh, one of the best things I, I, of Windows 10, I think, just to have all these notifications, email, Twitter, everything all in one place. And again, works very much like Windows Phone, or you may have seen on Android with the sort of the notification area. The other part of it is these sort of shortcuts. So you've got, you see, I've, I've been switching in and out of tablet mode. And um, we've got connect to connect to a wireless display. A note will open a new OneNote, and then the settings button. If we expand that, you've got some other things like battery saving, you can turn it on and off, or VPN. You can control the brightness. In fact, I should probably turn that up for the sake of this video and uh, we've got location set on and uh, we've not got flight mode we can have quiet hours a bit like on windows phone so we can say don't disturb us between 11 um, 11 pm and 6 am apart from for these kind of people and that kind of thing which is all linked with cortana uh, which is here again cortana brand new for windows 10 it's uh, very much like the windows phone version I've already put some of my details in there, but it collates together news stories that may be interested in. I get travel alerts for when I'm going home, and uh, you can also use Cortana. You can uh, 
use it for voice and other things as well I can also ask Cortana but you can use it for launching apps so if I wanted to launch uh, the mail app I could start typing and you can see uh, it knows the mail app there is a trusted Windows Store app or I can load the map um, but, or anything if I wanted to magnify it or whatever you wanted if I wanted to search stuff then I've got uh, the search options as well I can use it for reminders, time, place, person um, Cortana is a digital assistant for Windows and if you've not used it before I think uh, I think you'll like it there are things you can do uh, I think we can even set up Hey Cortana which is the um, voice activation let's see if I can get that set up Hey Cortana what time is it in New York? It is 8.08 in New York So you see that's the kind of thing you can use it for you can do reminders uh, you can set appointments up and uh, there's a lot of different features probably you could do a whole video itself in Cortana but for tablet users it's good because you've got no keyboard so you can use voice commands to uh, to open apps I think it might be able to do hey Cortana play me some music <laughs> okay there you search for stuff so that's how you search for stuff I thought uh, the Windows phone command, play me some music would work, but obviously not. Maybe I need to set that up. But, like I said, good for tablet users. So other apps you've got that are good for tablet users are, um, you've got the Word, or the Office mobile app, so you can have PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. Um, so these are designed for touch, and these are the mobile, these are available in the Windows Store. And um, the great thing about these is, you don't have to have any license for these for on a small tablet you can just download it from the store and um, they integrate with your OneNote so all your documentation or your other documents are available in OneNote and uh, they also, they're designed for touch as well so they've got good touch screen interfaces so you've got Word, Excel and PowerPoint so another, another good reason for tablet users to be happy with Windows 10 many of the other apps have been updated as well um, photos we've got Groove Music, which is a new replacement for Xbox Music, and again, these are all touch friendly, um, but the universal apps are the design for touch and for the desktop as well. And something else you can do, I can't really show it on this video, but I'll include a link to it in, with the, you can look at some of my previous videos, and you can stream Xbox um, One games to your tablet with the Xbox app. So I've not got an Xbox set up here in the office, so I can't show you now. But I have tested this and it works. What you can do with this is you can sign in with your Windows account. And then um, when you're on the same network as your Xbox, you can stream games to this. You can look at control in via the USB port and uh, you can play games. So I played Forza Horizon 2 on this tablet using the Xbox One. So another great use for your tablet. Networking is a bit of hit and miss. I find it does drop off every now and again and it does glitch. Perhaps that's why it's new, but also it worked better on a wired machine. So I guess it depends on the quality of your home network as well. The Edge browser that I mentioned earlier, that's um, touch friendly as well. And there is still Internet Explorer if you need it, but really this there's one browser, it's the Edge browser. So you've not got like that, the desktop and the modern version of Internet Explorer. There's no modern version of Internet Explorer on this. You have got Internet Explorer if you really need it for backwards compatibility, maybe something's using Silverlight or something like that. So that's still there, um, but if you're um, in tablet mode, it goes full screen and there isn't the old style Windows 8 modern one. Peter talks to his computer. He prefers it to type in. He particularly prefers it to paper and pen. So for tablet users, this is a real quick overview. I just wanted to show some of the new features. Tablet users, I think, are going to be uh, pleased with this. I know there are some people who don't like particularly this wasted space around the edges and the fact that the scrolling goes up and down now and you've lost the swipe up for all apps but they've been replaced by more discoverable features so you've got your apps list there you've got the task switcher there and um, I think it'll make thing, things easier for people to, to especially new users to understand you have lost the charms menu so many of the things like device sharing and things like that that were in the charms are now in the actual apps themselves so if you're watching a video and you want to share it to another device you could have used the device charm in Windows 8.1 now you go into the app on the, 
and, and launch it directly from the app. There's a cast to button in the app. So all those features that were in the charms have been replaced elsewhere within the app. There are one or two things that are missing, not really to do with tablet mode. And the Groove Music app has got some less features, especially around network sharing, but that's not a tablet feature. Overall, I think the, the tablet UI is great, and I think the... So overall, I think the tablet user interface is really good. I think the main thing is, though, there aren't two paradigms between a desktop and modern. It's all one thing. In tablet mode, everything's full screen. In not in tablet mode, everything's windowed. It's nice and easy to understand. And I know perhaps some of us advanced users were, were happy with the old way, but I think this is going to be easier for people to use. So if you're on the, on the fence about whether to upgrade, uh, I would upgrade. I do like this tech, this, and this is running on a Link 7 tablet, which is actually £59, this tablet. Now, if you want to buy it um, from various locations, including Amazon, so it's not an expensive product. And um, Windows 10 works really well on it. You don't need a uh, high specification. If it runs Windows 8.1, it'll run Windows 10. It's a free upgrade, so you should be getting that um, from July 29th. If you're on the Insiders, you can already... You've probably already tried, played with it. You can find out more on Windows 10 and some of the media features on our um, on our website, thedisclifestyle.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Sticks. And thanks for watching this one. Bye.